Okay, so we're talking about confidence intervals to estimate the population mean in this video. And we're going to assume that we have a large sample size of this problem. So our sample size is going to be 30 or larger so that we can assume that the distribution of x bar is normal, normally distributed or normal. Okay, so I could have just written a formula in the video and told you this is the formula to construct a confidence interval and go and plug some numbers in. But I think that it's best done in four steps and I wanted to write these four steps so that you would see them and understand how they are supposed to be performed. Okay, So it's pretty simple. Step one, you're going to record the data that's given in the problem. Now all problems that we're going to work with that involve the confidence interval for the mean will give us a sample size. We're going to have some sample size n. We're going to need that number for the problem. We will also need a sample mean. That will be something they calculated from that sample size of n. Then we will need you know, typically the formula says we need the population standard deviation, but we hardly ever actually have that in reality. So what we'll say is we need a standard deviation of some sort. If we could get the population value, great. But typically we'll use S as a substitute, the sample standard deviation. All right. And after that, we're going to need a confidence level. The confidence level will be provided to us in the problem along with these other values. Okay, so that's our first step in the process. The second step is going to be to get the critical Z value. Now we're going to have videos, or we have videos I should say, that are devoted to finding this quantity. So we'll have a little bit of explaining to you how we actually get this, but the essential idea is that we're going to get the critical Z value. We're going to call that value Z alpha divided by 2. And I always tell people, in my opinion, this is the hardest part of this process because really that's the only thing that's not given to us directly in the problem or is the only step that doesn't involve simply plugging numbers into a formula. Three and four, we just plug numbers into formulas. In step one, we're just copying what was given to us in the problem. Step two is the only thing we have to find pretty much on our own. Okay, now step three, after we have this critical table value, z alpha divided by two, step three is to calculate the ever important margin of error. This is what gives us the width in our interval. The margin of error is a formula. The formula is E equals two z alpha divided by 2, sigma divided by the square root of n. So it's the product of these two quantities, right? z alpha divided by 2 times sigma divided by the square root of n. The z alpha divided by 2 you would have had in step 2, right? So you have that number. Sigma and n are found in step 1. So basically by this time when you get to step 3, you have all the information you need. You just plug it in here and do the calculation. Once you calculate the margin of error, you're going to have that value. You go to step four, which is the easiest step of the process. You simply subtract that error from the x bar and add that error to the x bar. And when you do that, you end up with your interval. And essentially, what we'll say then is that we are, you know, x percent confident, whatever the confidence level is, you know, that the population means within that interval between those two numbers. In other words. All right. Now, now that we've discussed the four steps, I can go ahead and give you the formula. The formula is basically this. In fact, you'll see this notation between the two limits, which just means the mean is between these two limits. And the limits are x bar minus the error, right? But the error is actually z alpha divided by 2 sigma over the square root of n. And then x bar plus that same quantity, z alpha divided by 2 sigma over the square root of n. So that's the actual interval that we will be forming in the process, and that's what we get here down at the bottom.